I feel like we've been making croissants forever. Croissant? Croissant? Qu'est-ce qui se passe? Il y a un croissant? Ah, bien, gracias. Hello, I'm Hannah Hart. Welcome back to Edible History, the show that takes your palate on a trip to the past. Today we're going to be exploring the history of the croissant. Where did it come from? Why is it here? How soon can I eat one? I love croissants. It's the perfect pastry, period. But were croissants born perfect? To find out, I'm talking to Jim Chevalier, author of the book August Zang and the French Croissant. By the start of the 19th century, the Austrians had two rolls they really liked. One was a Kaiser Semmel, and made from the same dough, they made a crescent-shaped version of this, which was the Kipfel. So then a croissant is related to the Kaiser roll? It was. Wow. This is a trick. You have this Austrian officer named August Zeng. He came to Paris, did not like the bread, and he said what they need is Austrian bread. He opened this bakery on the Rue de Richelieu, and he began to sell Austrian specialties. The French bakers began to make the kipfel, but because it was shaped like a crescent, they just said, here, this is a crescent. And in French, crescent is croissant. So you're telling me that the croissant's heritage isn't as French as I think? There's a whole range of Austrian baking techniques which have completely transformed French baking from August Zang on. Like a modern day August Zang, Jim's brought me knowledge of an Austrian pastry I've never heard of before. However, I want to make something slightly different. Luckily, Jim's given me a recipe for Croissant Aubert by Urbain Dubois dating back 137 years. The basic ingredients for our croissant au beurre are milk, flour, salt, and butter. Now you may have noticed there's no butter on this table. Well, that's because we're gonna make it. And making it looked a little something like this. Uh, first things first, you gotta get your hands on one of these. Wow. We'll be making a pound and a half of butter, which is eight cups of heavy cream. Mmm, makes you want a cup of coffee. And now we churn. I feel like this should have been a closed set. FYI, I'm gonna be doing this for like the next 20 minutes. Oh my God, I think it's working. Okay, so it's now achieved more of like a squishing feeling than a sucking feeling. My arms have achieved a fatigue feeling. Let's take a look. Look at that! I can't believe it is butter. Next, we have to separate the butter from the buttermilk. Okay, this is heavier than I thought. Oh, yeah, and the butter, oh, joy of choice. Okay, so, uh, you know, we lost a little bit in the process, but hey, nobody said cooking was clean. This technically we're baking. <laughs> what I'm doing now is I'm squeezing out the last bits of the buttermilk from the butter. This will improve the shelf life of our butter and keep it from going bad. Squeeze. We've got a pretty beautiful butter ball. Butter ball, there's a reason behind everything. Now let's unwrap our cheesecloth and see our beautiful buttery creation. Everything is sticking to my buttery hands. Get that moisture out. Our fresh butter for you. Now that we're done with our butter, time to start making our dough. So to make our dough, we actually have to make two doughs. The first being a leavened dough. To make a leavened bread, duh, you need yeast. They didn't even put it in the ingredients list. That would have thrown me off. But then again, I probably wasn't baking. Unless I was a baker. Let's just move on. And once our milk gets to about body temperature, we'll be adding our yeast and our sugar. But for now, let's just talk. How are you? Good? Good. I'll holler when it's ready. So you can just go ahead and like browse, do some online shopping, and I'll be like, come back! Our milk is warm! 21st century, man. We can do 10 things at once, and none of them well. Okay, our milk is now warm enough. Come back! Adding some yeast and a half teaspoon of sugar. Great, now we wait for the yeast to activate. Awesome, now that our milk has this nice, like lightly foamy, lightly aerated texture, we know our yeast is active and ready to rock. Next, we'll be taking 15 grams of butter and 175 grams of flour. Now, we're gonna mix it together into little pea-sized chunks, but not too well mixed, because remember, a big part of this is making sure that our butter doesn't get too warm. Have you guys ever tried baking? It's hard. I'm gonna add just a little more butter. Last but not least, adding our milk, and we combine. Even with our leavened dough, you can already see that the structure of it is already creating layers and flaking. Okay, we're almost done kneading. Try and get the last of it. <laughs> Waste not, want not. Or as the French say, 
Cool. Now that we have our leaven dough, we're gonna set it aside and let it proof. On to the next one. Our second dough is flour, a quarter, ah! a quarter. Do you need to take a minute? Co-stars. A quarter pound of freshly churned butter and a grain of salt. The recipe literally says a grain of salt. Wow. And a little milk. Sploop. That seems good. Now we're going to make a fountain, which basically means to put a well in the center of our dough. Voila. The next step in the recipe says to simply soak the dough. I don't know what that means. So I'm gonna guess that it means add the remaining milk. So we've made one dough, we've made our second dough, now it's time to combine our doughs and then hopefully never make dough again. Croissants to me seem like a very high maintenance baked good. I've confirmed that fact. So our two doughs are now combined. Time to set it aside to proof. The next step is to break off walnut-sized pieces and roll them into a little ball. Be careful though, because the dough is so buttery, you don't wanna to spend too long rolling it with your hands because you're actually warming it up. And that's gonna melt the butter and really just your croissant. We're gonna roll it out into an oval shape. Ah, nice. Clingy, stretchy, rolly. Oopsies, okay, that's good. The folding of the crescent is probably the most important part of this whole thing. Pin it with the left hand. Then, taking the right hand, roll it from the opposite end towards the left. Don't let your left hand help. This is something your right hand has to learn to do on its own. Then we pinch it out a little bit and fold it over the top. Voila! Now we bend it into a vaguely crescent shape. And then taking both hands, gently place it on our baking sheet. So now I've picked six to set aside and we're just gonna sit back and let them rise. Man, there's a whole lot of waiting in making a croissant. Now that they've risen, our final step before baking is to top them with a light brushing of water. We did this because the water on the surface of the croissants will create a sort of steam once it enters the oven. That'll help with the leavening effect. Hi, I'm Hannah. I know what I'm talking about. While the croissants are baking, our next step is to make a light syrup. This syrup is made of cornstarch and water, and that's it. Okay, judging from the amount of steam. Oh yeah, there we go. We'll just set that aside and then we'll finish up our croissants. Hello, <gasps> look at our croissants. Now, these don't look like modern day croissants and we knew that, but I also didn't expect them to just not at all resemble modern day croissants. Maybe when they're shiny, it'll be more familiar. Okay, we take our starchy syrup, which has the texture and smell of a hot glue, and we give them a nice spread. Now it's great because it looks like somebody sneezed on them. So, here are our 19th century croissants. Let's take a taste. Huh. It's a lot more like a thick, thick cracker. I wouldn't call it a biscuit, because biscuits have flavor. Let me just taste this starch stuff. It tastes exactly like it looks. I asked Jim whether or not people ate croissants with something, like butter or jam or ham and cheese. He said no, which I find surprising. Now from our modern day perspective, this may be pretty uninspiring, but remember, this was the height of baking. I can understand why this was a beloved baked good of the past. I prefer what we have in the present, but it's pretty cool to hold something that people haven't made in over a hundred years. Cool. I had a lot of starch on it. <laughs>